is CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at your top stories of the day. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And off the top, a live look outside. More rounds of storms are brewing and it could affect your afternoon commute. Let's get right to next weather chief meteorologist and hurricane specialist Ivan Cabrera. What's the situation looking like? Yeah, so we're starting, you know, a little later. We've had a couple of thunderstorms so far this afternoon, but everything will continue uh, to bubble up and um, push towards the east. So absolutely, the even commute uh, is going to be a wet one here. Just a couple of isolated showers south of Cutler Bay. That's it for now, but that's not where we're going to stop here. Notice on rain track will begin to see these thunderstorms blossoming over the Everglades and then slowly migrating to the east as that happens. So we're going to get some locally heavy downpours, even the potential for a few isolated strong to even marginally severe wind gusts not out of the question there. As we continue monitoring the atmosphere, you can see this continues through late this evening and heading into, uh, you know, the overnight hours will begin to quiet things down. Frontal boundary pushes to the south and we're uh, going to get a tropical update here and we'll be monitoring this system that we've been talking about the entire week. Finally, uh, perhaps getting a name, but for you and me, what's important is this front is really not going to push all the way as far south as anticipated. So what that means is rain chances are still going to be lower for tomorrow and heading into Saturday, but not as low as we get a quick shift in the winds. They're going to come out of the north northeast and then eventually come right back out of the south. And that is always going to be you know, uh, for us, uh, meaning showers and thunderstorms back into the picture as we rain track conditions for us uh, as we head into a Friday notice through the morning hours pretty quiet and even by the afternoon a lot less coverage right with that drier air up above than what we've been seeing the last few days so this is a nice break uh, that we're anticipating and uh, looking forward to here friday night a couple of offshore showers as is typical for that time and into the early part of the day on Saturday and then we'll be back into some showers and afternoon thunderstorms, but you can see it right through noon. I think we're good for you know outdoor activities. Then in the afternoon, they'll be widely scattered, but there will be a few showers and thunderstorms that we'll have to uh, contend with out there as things won't be as dry. And then Sunday really that rain chances coming right back up in the tropics. Yes, we have this area that we're monitoring this tropical wave across the eastern Atlantic. We have uh, a good week plus uh, to get uh, that going as far as the models uh, agreeing. It's going to move towards the west Northwest that looks like a curve up to sea to me right now, but this is the area of low pressure along that front that we've been talking about all week. Well, National Hurricane Center is you know looking at this or saying, well, first of all, this could develop into a tropical storm. It hasn't yet, but it's so close to land that we have to let people know. And so that's why they've initiated this potential tropical system as we continue to see the cone now pushing towards the north and then northwest. Yeah, making landfall here in the Carolinas as a tropical storm with you know, sustained winds at 60 miles an hour. I think we'll see gusts into the 50s here, not so much, you know, 60 plus, and then eventually making a mess out of the weekend, I must say, for the Mid Atlantic and Northeast with some heavy pockets uh, of rainfall there. So we'll continue to monitor that. As far as the forecast here, apparently the Dolphins are playing twice there. We'll help fix that for Sunday, but yes, we're very excited. That's coming up. Now, tomorrow, again, rain chance is only about 30%. We'll bump that up a little bit on uh, to 40% on this Saturday. That's the first day of fall, and then fins on CBS. Miami here on Sunday with rain chances coming right back up nausea into next week. All right, keep those umbrellas handy. Thank you, Ivan. Now at for a disturbing discovery in Davie, a man arrested and accused of animal cruelty and drug charges. CBS News Miami's Ted Scouten has the details. A disturbing case of animal cruelty here in Davie. It happened inside this trailer here. It began last week when a SWAT team pulled up to serve a search warrant in a drug case. Inside, they found 25 French bulldog mix. Investigators say this was an unsanitary and illegal puppy mill. Investigators say many of the dogs were kept in small cages, standing or sitting in their own waste. Police noting that some of the cages had two or three dogs in them, leaving them no room to move or turn around. Sean Brodnax was in Boncourt this morning. He's facing more than 100 charges, including animal cruelty allegations. He's being held on $133,000 bond. That's for this case. In addition, he's also facing drug and weapons charges. Tonight, those dogs are being cared for at the Broward County Animal Care. We'll have much more coming up at 530. In Davie, Ted Scouten, CBS News, Miami. Ukraine's president delivered a stark message to lawmakers. He needs their help in order to save his country, but not everyone in Washington is willing to help. CBS News Miami's Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. Natalie. 
Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky made his second wartime visit to the White House. Mr. President, how important is this visit? It comes as President Biden is pushing Congress to approve an additional $24 billion in military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. We would like additional resources from the Congress on October 1st to be able to ensure that there's no disruption in the supply of funding to Ukraine. Zelensky spent the morning making his case on Capitol Hill in a series of private meetings. We spoke about so many details, but it will be between us. Sorry. Thank you. Lawmakers say Ukraine's president painted a stark picture of the situation on the ground. If we step away from supporting them, the Russians will win this war. He was very clear about that. But the White House funding request is facing growing opposition from some Republicans who have raised concerns about spending and accountability. The question, though, for the United States is, what is it that we are trying to accomplish and at what cost? I mean, we're going to spend another $100 billion? For, for what? Republicans who support additional funding say the U.S. cannot afford to let Russia win. The majority of the majority support this. I know there's some dissension on both sides, but I said a war of attrition is not going to win this. And that's what Putin wants. Even as Zelensky was in the Capitol Thursday, the fight over funding the U.S. government to avoid a shutdown took a new turn on the House on floor. Vote, the yeas are 212, the nays are 216. The resolution is not adopted. Hard right Republicans again blocked a move to vote on a Pentagon spending bill. Uh, I had two people flip. Speaker Kevin McCarthy thought he had the votes to pass. Now happening right now at the, the White House, President Biden and President Zelensky are meeting inside the Oval Office. Zelensky arriving here a short time ago and ahead of their uh, private meeting, President Biden said uh, no nation will be secure if we don't stand up for an invasion. Uh, as for where Florida's senators stand on the additional uh, funding for Ukraine, uh, they've expressed that they would like to see disaster relief for the U.S. and Florida pass uh, before additional aid for Ukraine is considered. Naja. All right, Natalie, thank you for that report. And this week's Miami Proud, a look at how the memory and legacy of Bay of Pigs veterans is being preserved at two South Florida museums. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Hollywood writers and production studios will resume talks today. It is signaling a possible resolution. TV and film writers have been on strike for more than four months now. They're pushing for increased pay and more security around the use of artificial intelligence. CBS News Miami's Jared Hill has the latest. It's the same script, but hope for a better ending for striking writers on the picket lines in L.A. In a rare joint statement, the Writers Guild of America and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers said they met for bargaining Wednesday and will meet again on Thursday. Hollywood writers walked off the job nearly five months ago, demanding a new contract that addresses concerns over how much they're paid and what role artificial intelligence will play in crafting TV shows and movies. While industry analysts say negotiations are likely far from over, reports suggest there is something different with this latest round of talks especially with CEOs from some of the major studios actually in the room. While the Writers Guild may be crafting a new future, no word on movement for Hollywood actors. Speaking at a tech expo in Germany, George Clooney said he hopes that an end is near. It's estimated the strikes have already cost the U.S. economy billions of dollars. Jared Hill, CBS News. The joint strikes are already changing fall TV schedules. A number of talk shows postpone their new seasons until the strikes are resolved.
Now to an all new Miami Proud with a nod to Hispanic heritage. The story of the Bay of Pigs invasion is woven into the fabric of South Florida, but with time we are losing more and more veterans of that operation. CBS News Miami's Hank Tester shows us how two local museums are scrambling to preserve history. Big plans for a $2 million expansion of Little Havana's Bay of Pigs Museum. That's Rafael Montalvo, president of the Bay of Pigs Veterans Association, along with Carlos Luis, president of the museum and library. Montalvo is a Bay of Pigs veteran. Luis is the son of a veteran of the April 1961 CIA-sponsored attempt to overthrow the Cuban regime, headed by Fidel Castro. A great deal of the new museum is going to be audiovisual. Telling the story of the landing on the south coast of Cuba at the Bay of Pigs. A force of 1,500 Cuban volunteers determined to take back their country. A gallant yet failed effort that ended in prison for a majority of the landing force, death for others. That's the message here, that, that freedom is worth dying for and offering your life for it. And it's a race against time. Many of the Bay of Pigs veterans are now elderly in their 80s, and some are not doing well. Felix Rodriguez heads the Crosstown City-sponsored Hialeah Gardens Museum honoring the Brigade 2506. Now we are getting individual here, younger, that we're going to train uh, to be able to give a tour of this museum with the team that we know. So they will be able, when we are no longer around, they will be able to give a tour of everything that is inside this museum. And there's plenty to see in the city-sponsored museum that has the feel of a Cuban home. Broad windows, an atrium full of lots of pictures, weapons, memorabilia, outside a tank from the era, and an A-26 used in the operation. What's it like for you to, to watch children and grandchildren of the veterans coming through here. It's a great personal satisfaction to be able to provide that for them. Two museums scrambling to tell the story and challenged by Father Time. Of the original members of the entire Brigade 2506 operation. There's probably 300 left and you know half of them have the beginning of dementia. Are you sitting down with these guys videotaping them and asking them to tell their story? We have. We have uh, over 110 uh, veterans which we videotaped, right? And we're going to make sure that we go ahead and display them in our new museum. If you want information on how to visit these two museums, take a look at our website at cbsmiami.com. In Hialeah Gardens, I'm Hank Tester, CBS News Miami. That's your CBS News Miami QuickCast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami.